Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Zina speaking. Today we'll be talking about how to give the incisive nerve a block. In my previous video, I talked about the mental nerve. Now today we will talk about the incisive nerve. But before we continue, make sure to smash the subscribe button down below for more and more videos. So as we said previously, the inferior alveolar nerve has two terminal branches, which are the mental nerve and the incisor nerve. Today, our main focus will be on the incisive nerve. As you can see, we have the inferior alveolar nerve that has two terminal branches, the mental nerve and the incisive nerve. The mental nerve exits from the mental foramen. The Incisive nerve continues to supply the anterior teeth, the incisors, as you can see in the picture. That's why it's called incisive nerve, because it continues to supply the anterior teeth or the incisors. Now, we have, as I said, two terminal branches that fall under the inferior alveolar nerve. We have the mental nerve and we have the incisive nerve. The mental nerve supplies the anteriors together with the first and second premolar, whereas the incisive nerve supplies the anteriors together with the first premolar only. So only the first premolar plus the anteriors will be supplied by the incisive nerve, whereas the mental nerve up to the second premolar. That's why I said in my previous video, if you are planning to give a mental nerve block between the two premolars, you go five to six millimeters deep. In comparison with the incisive nerve block, uh, between the first premolar and the canal, you will go five to six millimeters deep on the buccal mucosa, you will give, and you need to apply pressure in so that the pulp of the tooth will be anesthetized. So the difference between giving the mental nerve block and the incisive nerve block is that the incisive nerve block requires pressure to direct the local anesthetic solution into the mental foramen. So similar to the mental nerve, you will give the incisive nerve, but you will apply a pressure inside the mental foramen. So you go more deeper than five to six millimeters in order to direct the pressure into the mental foramen through which the incisive nerve will be anesthetized because you will apply pressure on that area and then it will anesthetize the pulp of the anterior tear. So remember that if you are planning to do a root canal treatment for, for instance, four incisors, four lower incisors. So the uh, option is to give your patient an incisive nerve block, not to give an inferior nerve block. Inferior nerve block is better for the posteriors, but not for the anterior. So for the anterior, you will give an incisive nerve block that will anesthetize the pulp of the lower anterior teeth together with the lower lip area. Anterior to the mental foramen. The clinician can utilize radiographs and palpation to identify the mental foramen. It is best to retract to be able to visualize the area between the two premolars. The insertion site will be at the depth of the mucobuccal fold, at approximately 20 degrees to the long axis of the root. It is important to keep the retraction thumb well out of the way. There are two options, both vertical, demonstrated first in the video, and horizontal, demonstrated second. The deposit site will still remain slightly superior to the mental foramen. The difference will be seating position. For a 12 o'clock vertical position, the clinician can utilize their thumb to retract the tissue downward and outward, utilizing the rest of the fingers of the hand to support the chin. You need to confirm that you have good visualization to the depth of the vestibule. You will loosen the cap, achieve stability, and visualize your penetration location at the depth of the vestibule. The target site is slightly superior to the mental foramen. 
it is possible to use extra oral options for stability, like the patient's goggles, as demonstrated in the video. The mental incisive is a combination nerve block. If a clinician only gave a mental, it would anesthetize the buccal soft tissue of the premolars through the central incisors, the lower lip and chin, and possibly the tooth at the deposit site. If a one-minute massage is administered, the incisive is included. This will anesthetize the pulpal of the premolars through the midline, as well as the buccal soft tissue and the chin and lip. Extended verbals for the anterior to the mental foramen. The clinician can utilize radiographs and palpation to identify the mental foramen. The incisive nerve innervates the canines, the incisors, both the lateral incisor and the central incisor, together with the first premolar only. So it hits the pulp of the tooth. So if you are planning to do a root canal treatment for the four lower incisors in the mandible, then it's better to give your patient an incisive nerve block that has the same technique as the mental nerve block in which you will give an, instead of giving for the mental nerve block i said in my previous video that between the two premolars you will go down five to six millimeters through which you will hit the mental nerve and here, because we said that the incisive nerve supplies the mandibular first premolar, not the second premolar, so it's better, rather than going between the two premolars, you will go between the first premolar and the canine, and then you will go five to six millimeters down, then the incisive nerve will be anesthetized at the end. So which means that the patient will no longer feel pain in that area. Thank you all for watching my video. If you have any questions, please do write it down in the comment section below and I will be more than delighted to answer your questions. Goodbye now.